Hello guys, my name is Sergio Lama, I'm a software architect and this is the first video of a playlist where I'm going to build the front-end application of a social network. In this video I will show how to create a React application with Yarn, how to configure a Git repository and describe the file structure of a React project. You can find the GitHub project in the link at the upper right corner or in the description of the video. But before starting, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss a video. Here we go. Let's first check we have all the applications needed, which are Yarn and NPM. Both are packages managers, dependencies manager. Yarn is much faster, but it uses NPM, that's why we need both. That's all what we need. Now, create the project. This will create the folder structure, some scripts to build, run and test the application, and download all the initial dependencies. Ok, done in 70 seconds. Now, let's go inside our project. And I can see that there is already some files and folder. And I also have a git repository with an initial comment. With one single command, I've created a complete React application. That's awesome. I'm gonna open the project with my IDE. It's easier to make the changes. First thing I see is the readme file, which already has some documentation. Where I can see the comments to run the application and the URL to view our application in the browser. I can see the readme file in the edit mode or in the preview way, which is how it's displayed in GitHub. Let's now see what Yon created for us. This is an internal folder of my IDE. The node modules folder is where all the binary dependencies were downloaded. Now the public and the source folders. The public folder contains all the static resources, the HTML, the images and more. And the source folder will have all the JavaScript code, the React application. The content of the source folder will be built, minified and obfuscated and then included in the public folder when compiling. So try to maintain all the JavaScript part in the source folder. If I continue, I can see the gitigno file, the package JSON which contains the information about the needed dependencies and the scripts, the readme, and the yarn rock which contains the information about the currently installed dependencies. That's all in the root folder. Do you want to see more? Let's first run the application. As in the readme file, I only need to run yarn start and the web page should be available. Let's see. Here it is. Ok, it's an empty page, but it's what we have by default in our project. And now, if I do some modifications in my code, Yarn will automatically build the files and refresh the web page. I don't need to refresh and restart anything. That's awesome. That will save me a lot of time. Ok, let's see now from where comes all of this content. As we see, the public folder contains the index.html, which is the entry point of all the web pages. The rest of the files are referenced from the index.html, except the robot.txt, which is used by the search engines. If I open the index.html, it's quite empty. This root element will be used to inject all our application. Let's see it. Let's open the index.js. We'll see the app files immediately, but I won't talk about those two files. As we see, React renders the app component inside the root element we saw in the index.html. And this app component is the one here. We also see that React mixes JavaScript with HTML elements. That's GSX. If you go now to the app.js file, I see what was displayed in the browser. The logo, the text, 
and the link. Instead of having the HTML and the JavaScript separated, you had mixed them into named components, which is a way much easier. What about the CSS? We see here the import of the CSS file. This way, I have the CSS of the current component next to the component itself. React allows me to have the JavaScript, the HTML, and the CSS all together, and not grouped by page, but by components. This means that a component can be used in multiple pages or multiple times in a single page. And that's what will be rendered, reloaded, if any change occurs, not the entire web page. That was all for this video. If you like it, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss a video. Thank you.